Let's talk about Steven Gerrard, shall we? He was the most protected manager I have, think I've ever seen in Premier League history. Luckily for Aston Villa, somebody upstairs at the club has their own mind, isn't listening to the media, and finally realised how truly poor he was. What I can't believe is how protected Steven Gerrard was, how little criticism he faced from the media. And despite the protestations of the Aston Villa fans, nobody in the media, A, wanted to talk about it prior to his sacking, or B, is talking about it now he has been sacked. What are they scared of? They didn't hold back with Frank. They didn't hold back with Oli. They really pushed for Mikel Arteta. I've seen so many more managers come under massive scrutiny, massive amounts of pressure. And this whole Gerard thing, I feel like I've made it up because I'm seeing nothing about it. It's almost like he never managed Aston Villa. There would be debates on Sky. There would be debates on Talk Sport. It would be back page news. It's just no news whatsoever. Why? Right. We know he won a Scottish League. Neil Lennon won five. It's really not that difficult. Gerard, for me, all he's proven is that he does not have the capabilities to be the future Liverpool manager, like everyone was saying that he was. He's shit. Let's look at the numbers. In 38 games for Aston Villa, he managed just 12 wins, 18 losses and eight draws. For a team that spent £80 million under his reign on new players he wanted and... There was an existing core of players there that were already good, some good pros there. It just simply wasn't good enough. And this season, they spent £52 million in the summer. He won two games. He lost six, drew three. And this isn't an Aston Villa side that is a relegation battle inside. I mean, it is down to Steven Gerrard's management, but it wasn't. And it shouldn't be. I see this as a side comparable with the likes of West Ham and Everton on paper. Maybe even a little bit better than some of those. Certainly not relegation fodder. Gary Neville gets slaughtered for his time at Valencia. He managed a 35% win rate at the club. Gerard has been 33 at Aston Villa. Worse, nothing said. One's considered a laughing stock for his time as a manager and has vowed to never darken managerial doors ever again. And one has just nothing, regarded as an exciting future manager. Make it make sense. You can't blame lack of recruitment on his downfall. He signed Danny Ings, Luca Dean, Leon Bailey, and Bubakar Kamara, who I spent all summer picking up. Good player. He had the players to work with. He had one of the best goalkeepers in the league. To put a team like that into a relegation scrap was actually hard work, and you saw the fruits of that the day he went, when they turned up, smacked in more goals in one game than they managed all season under him. All the praise that Gerard has constantly received as a manager, for me, his true level was shown. He's poor. And... Everyone defending him. They lose 3-0 to Fulham. Villa fans are chanting, get out of our club. They were 17th in the table. The next day, Jamie Garrick comes out and goes, he's my mate. And then that was the entire depth of the analysis Jamie Carrick had decided to deliver. Monday Night Football is meant to be the show that delves into this stuff. The show that gives you the insights. There was no insight. He just says, my mate, and that's that. Jimmy, you're a pundit. Be a pundit. You are paid for your opinion. We want to know your opinion. Why was your mate so shit as a manager? You're so fast to absolutely destroy Gary Neville, six feet away from you for his managerial record, but my mate Stevie Me over here has got a far worse record, and your only comment is, he's my mate. It's not good enough. He said in the Telegraph after Villa's poor start to the season, there's an interesting contrast between Gerrard's current stock with Villa fans and Frank Lampard's with Everton's. And he says, while Gerrard's trying to retain his fan base's support, Lampard's name is chanted every Everton game. What's the difference? Well, Lampard has had an opportunity to manage Chelsea, so now he's not viewed with suspicion by Evertonians mapping, as mapping out stages of his career. Gerrard is fighting with the perception that Villa is a stepping stone towards the ultimate goal of becoming Liverpool manager. Stop trying to let your mate off the hook. Inarguably, if you looked at the trajectory of both managers, Lampard had come down from managing Chelsea, his dream job. He, didn't, he did a bang average job at Derby. Somehow got the Chelsea job on the back of being a Chelsea legend. And then is, is coming to Everton to rebuild his career. Started off poor. It's going quite well for him at the moment. Gerrard is on an upward trajectory. Do you think Aston Villa fans view themselves as the ultimate goal for any manager? Don't be stupid. And the only people talking about him being Liverpool manager was the likes of yourself. What did delivering a title in Scotland entitle you to giving the, the Liverpool manager's job? When did that become real? That's not real. Aston Villa wouldn't have cared. If Aston Villa had been delivered European football, a cup run, even a League Cup run, 
on the back of Steven Gerrard brilliant management, they wouldn't have given a shit in three years' time if Liverpool had turned around and plucked him up. They wouldn't have give a fuck. They'd have accepted it. They would have accepted the ride that they was on, just the same as they would with any player that comes busting through their ranks who dreams of playing Champions League football. Aston Villa fans weren't thinking this guy sees us as a stepping stone. They weren't thinking that. They were thinking, this guy's gash, get him out of our club. Aston Villa fans aren't thick. It's a team that's won a European title. There's some educated football fans that are Aston Villa fans. And they know that that team, for me, comparable with West Ham, Everton, that sort of side, you know, anywhere between 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, that's where that team's probably about lining up. They get a bit of a run, they might get as high as 7th or 8th, but not fighting relegation. And that's where Stephen Adam, Gerard had them fighting relegation. They're not thick. They look at the squad on paper and they know he ain't getting a tune out of this squad. This squad should be doing far better. Sooness. His helmet. Sooness on the day before Gerard was sacked. I thought they were really good at times and I think Villa supporters should be encouraged by that. That is what you have to believe. You are going to get it going forward. So cut Steven Gerrard some slack. Why does, he be, why does he deserve to be cut slack? Honestly, the stuff that comes out of Sooness's mouth, I think he's on a wind-up at the moment. That's the only explanation I can think of it. The only explanation I can think. He's out here telling people that Ten Hag's not going to be here in five years and Ronaldo was right to throw his, his toys out of pram. Not a prayer would he have accepted that from someone doing that to Jurgen Klopp. Not a prayer, by the way. Regardless of the stature of the player. If Mo Salah had done that to Jurgen Klopp, he'd have seen his ass. It'd have been really interesting to see his reaction after that, actually. If it was Oli that was going through the sort of stuff that he was going for, some of the stuff that he said about Oli, this is a guy that managed... Listen, forget what the media has told you. The cold, hard facts are Oli Gunnar Solskjaer had Manchester United finishing second, third, back-to-back. Back-to-back Champions League finishes that Louis van Gaal couldn't do, David Moyes couldn't even dream of, Jose Mourinho couldn't do. And as yet, Eric Ten Hag, who's doing a phenomenal job, is you know, he's almost two years away from finding out if he can do that. Oli managed it. Circumstances or whatever aside... He managed to get to cup finals and the fact is he managed to finish inside the top four in back-to-back -back seasons. No manager post-Fergie has managed to do that. What did Graham say about him? He comes across as a nice human being. Not sure if Ollie's capable of getting stuck into them verbally and telling them what he really thinks. Everything was diminished with Ollie. He was a nice lad, but is he ruthless? Where was the defence of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Jurgen Klopp, a couple of weeks ago, gets a 1-0 win at home to Manchester City with 30% possession playing counter-attacking football. Do you remember when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was doing the same things to Pep Guardiola with a far inferior squad, not a squad that was so-called best manager in world football, best right-back, left-back, goalkeeper, centre-half, right-winger, fucking central midfielder. Do you know all of that that Liverpool is blessed with? Playing this cowardly counter-attacking football, which Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was crucified for playing, yet still getting a result. Remember that? Ole got zero credit for some of those tactical wins. Yes, we played on the counter. The team was not fucking good enough to play on the front foot. And if it's all right for Jurgen Klopp, why was it not all right for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Jurgen Klopp, who I keep getting told has won everything, by the way, still has to resort to this cowardly fucking basic football. Ole's not capable of that. Right, all right. But Steven Gerrard needs time. Right. Interesting. Wonder what the correlation here is. Even Gary Neville. Now, Gary Neville, for me, d besmirches his own career. And I think he does it to try and appease the anti-United sort of feeling that's prevalent in the media. Most people grew up hating United. Most, like, if you support Sheffield Wednesday, you hate United for some reason. We don't even know you fucking exist. If you support fucking Scunthorpe, you hate United because they were the most successful team. And you probably had kids wearing United kits at your soccer schools when you were seven, right? Nothing we can do about that. Successful clubs have a, a wide-ranging net. But for some reason, everyone grew up hating United. So when you're a famous Manchester United player like a Gary Neville, you take a role like he has done and potentially could be doing stepping into politics as well. You have to diminish the hatred everyone has of your club career, your unbelievably successful club career. Gary Neville likes to play down his ability. He was a fucking wonderful player. And he was in that team, the most successful Manchester United teams, a team that managed to, to win title after title after title, including the impossible treble, which has never been done in three peaks of the league. Has to diminish his career because of the anti-United feeling that's present in this country. Make no mistake, Gary Neville's a fucking hell of a footballer. He, did, he plays it down to appease that Monday night football crowd, in my opinion. And he does the same with his managerial career. Now, he said that he's the first to completely ridicule his own sacking and completely ridicule his own managerial performance. Gary Neville said he's never going to manage again after the failed experiment of managing Valencia. Yeah, he says 
the Villa board are a joke for sacking Gerard after the game. Unless it was in the circumstances of how he was fired, you can't argue with the fact he was fired. He was shit and not getting a tune. Do you know what I mean? He was rightly sacked. Losing in that fashion to a newly promoted team, <laughs> I can't believe they let him on the bus, to be honest. I'd have loved to have been a fly on the wall on that bus. What is this conspiracy protecting Steven Gerrard? Why is he protected? Why am I not seeing meme after meme after... Do you remember when he, he first came to the Premier League? And he's got his hands in his pockets walking across the pitch and all the scouts are going mental because look at the stare he's got. His stare. He's a fucking bloke looking at a crowd. What are we doing? I think Neil Lennon's just going to prove that the uh, Cypriot League's harder to win than the Scottish League. And in fact, there's a half chance that the genius that Steven Gerrard was as a manager was in his assistant, Michael Beale, who's absolutely smashing it and has had QPR top of the championship this year. That's what I think. Why do you lot think Steven Gerrard is protected? Why do you think he doesn't get in the fair criticism that he deserves? You ain't Liverpool. Yeah, I do. Wear it like a badge of honour. Graham Souness is out here pretending to be neutral. If he was like, do you know what? I hate United and that's my personality. We could buy it. We don't do that. He pretends to be neutral and he's full of shit. So fuck Souness and fuck Steven Gerrard. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.